Hello everyone and welcome to part 8 of our tutorial series. This is the last video in our Racing UI series and in this one we'll be showing you how to profile your UI for any performance bottlenecks. We'll be showing you how to use the Chrome Dev tools that come with game face and explain the different markers that, should, that you should be on the lookout for. Okay, now let's start profiling our game. The first thing to do is to actually have our game running. So I'm going to start in the editor and now we can go into the browser and type in localhost nine four four. This is the default port for the dev tools. You can of course change it from the C site and you can also disable or enable the dev tools. So the dev tools first you have to open the page. So the dev tools are the same as you would see when you're profiling a page in Google Chrome. They are the Chrome dev tools. And there are a few tabs here that we often will use, such as the elements, console, sources, and last but not least, the performance one, which we'll be going over today. So first, let's start by start starting a recording and to do that we can either press the record here or Control e on our keyboard. Now that we have started our performance recording, we need to jump back into our game so we can do some stuff that will be recorded. So here let's just pass all the cars. And now we can go back and stop the recording. And now we have this recording. Since our game is very little and there's not that much UI in it, the performance will be like this, very small and in milliseconds or even microseconds in some places. So I want to point out a few things that are going on here. So let's just choose this part of the UI and let's zoom in using the mouse wheel. So there are two things that you actually three threads that you need to be looking out for. This would be the mainframes, the layout frames and the rendering frames. So we'll start with the main ones. Here you see almost in actually in every profile that you do the advanced marker which is the function in the backend that advances the internal timer of the view and then runs all the animation scripts etc. So the advanced will include all the JS code executions, animations, heat testing of the mouse, layout recalculation caused by animations or the JS and more. In general if we have a large advanced call it's most likely due to a heavy executing JavaScript code. Now in our case here it's just 0 0.12 milliseconds so it doesn't really need to be looked upon that much. You can see here recalculate styles is actually the one that is the largest it's just 60 microseconds it's not that large but in our case it would be and this is usually when the styling of an element changes since this is mo this happens a lot in the UI you really need to look at it that much here is the other one that is actually longer, it's 0 0.36 milliseconds and it's synchronized models. This is whenever one of the models that we bound to our UI is synchronized. And we can see a few style calculations that are caused by the bindings. And here is the largest marker which will be the custom binding attribute update. We've already talked about this when we made the video on the leaderboard. Since we're executing a lot of JavaScript code in our data binding, 
it will probably be heavier than using something like that bind four, for instance. And we can see that here that it takes this actually takes a lot more time than the rest. And here we can see that the update function, which if we click on it and in the summary, we can actually get in the sources tab whenever it's executed and how much time it takes. And here we can see that actually this inner HTML is the one that takes the most time. So, and we do this for each of the leaderboard items. To change this, we can go into our game and change the whole logic, but we're not going to do this today. So I just want to point it out to you. And we can see all the other functions that are executed. The other markers that are important are the layout and the rendering. In the layout, we can see the layout actually going. And here is the front process front-end commands. This is done when the work during rendering is divided into two big groups, front-end. He here is where it's decided what graphics API calls are needed and backend, which you see in the rendering group that does the actual interaction with the graphic APIs. So this is the marker that shows how much time is spent in the front-end and we can see here where it's processing these commands. Here at the top we can actually see this green part where it has in the rendering tab a bunch of one point eight eight seven milliseconds paints. Now this happened when we use the custom effect. So if you go into our game and remove it, we won't, or don't crash into other cars, we won't see it. And here we can see the backend and the execute backend buffers. So the paint is the top level marker for all rendering related work. And this is the time that CoHTML spends in paint. The Backend is well, what we said, the interaction with the graphic APIs that were called during the front-end commands. And execute backend buffers is the actual execution of these APIs. And this is the end of our video and the end of our Racing UI series. If you've liked this video and the rest of the series, Leave us a like and share it. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe to our channel. We're planning to release more videos in the future, so we will appreciate any feedback that you might have in the comments down below. Thank you and have a great day.